All right, good morning, everybody. There were two things I wanted to talk about. One was an idea that I thought of yesterday for a video after I learned something new. But whoever's in the forefront and, and right in front of my eyes usually takes precedence, and so that's what I'll have to be doing. There was, I guess, some kind of a brouhaha a little bit on Twitter. I only saw it peripherally about someone I don't know who they were. Uh, upset that uh, Moreno Harabshmul Kamenetsky Shlita is, uh, vocally supported President Trump and said that if uh, if Biden wins and we all know that if Biden wins it's not him he'll just be a puppet for whoever it is I mean it'll be worse than than, uh, than Woodrow Wilson at the end of, of his presidency when he was incapacitated <laughs> that was the end of an eight-year presidency that w was already one of the probably the worst in the 20th century was was Woodrow Wilson did the most damage to this republic uh, worse even, probably even worse than FDR or LBJ and here you have um, someone entering the presidency like that and you know one thing was that you know Wilson himself was an ideologue whereas uh, that Mr. Biden is merely a, a just a, a dirty politician, you know, a cheap, dirty politician. That's all he is. Um, and like I've heard some people say that he's very easy to manipulate. And that's the, the most dangerous, most anti-American elements are going to be manipulating this man um, and and operating behind the scenes. You know, I mean, I know people who use conspiracy theory language, like to use the term puppet master, and uh, here you, 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 it's impossible when it comes to someone like Biden to deny that, that we're, that's what we're dealing with, is, is someone who's merely a puppet. In any event... I, and I forgot who it was who made the first comment, and then someone who had professor in front of his name, and a Jewish-sounding name, had uh, had some comment, was one of the first uh, commenters that at least came up, I don't know if he was the first one to actually comment, or if just that the YouTube algorithm favored his comment. I, I don't know exactly how these things work, to be honest especially when it was a, a tweet that got uh, garnered so much attention and criticism. But uh, basically, there was some kind of a discussion, and I, again, I'm, I, I only briefly looked at this, and I offered some comments, and I kind of felt that, you know, uh, even though I, I, my comments were divided between two tweets, the Twitter platform isn't sufficient to really express oneself fully as to what I want to bring out here. And here on YouTube, I'm able to talk a little more uh, unless they're going to take me down. Who knows what's what's going to happen. I'm not talking about the whatever that, that medicine is, the hydroxy, I don't know, uh, Oreo hydrox... I don't know, hydroxychlorophyll, I don't know, hydroxychloroquine. It's funny, why Why is there a cookie brand, Hydrox? That's a, alright, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I, I'm, not, I'm not commenting on that, so whoever the powers that be at, at YouTube, you're not going to take me down, because I'm not talking about that. But I am going to talk about the Haredi Orthodox Jewish community vis-a-vis -vis politics to a certain extent and I don't I really shouldn't say community in the singular but rather communities in the plural because it's not a monolithic community we don't you know we're, we're essentially congregationalist in our polity uh, you know the, the reform and conservative movements as movements are more organized and to a, a lesser extent, the modern Orthodox communities have a certain level of organization. Whereas, Bam Inzir, Haimish, Erlich, Hashani, Eden, 
I don't know why it's on the side now after way after it fell. It's on the side, but anyway, it's not gonna fix. All right, this is why Mekin Heron was 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 Murat. You can hear what I'm saying. Uh, it is not a monolithic community. There's a many many different Haredi communities, and the truth is also. As much as people try to say, oh, that we are, you know, we, we kowtow to our gedolim and this and that, and, and we're, we blindly follow our rabbis, and especially the, accusing the Hasidim of, you know, just blindly following rabbis. I can't talk for every Hasidic community. Truth is, certain Hasidic communities do operate like that. But I have more of a, an affinity to the to the Hungarian communities like Satmer and the affiliated, associated communities. I mean, I have my Rebbe, who's a Hungarian Rebbe, I'm not going to mention who, uh, but, the, you know, from the oldest Hungarian Hasidic community, it's my Rebbe, not and just because he's my Rebbe, you know, that's he's, been, he's the first Rebbe I've ever met, and he's been my Rebbe for a long time. Uh, but I'm not representing him. I don't blindly follow him. I sometimes understand that he gives some veiled criticism of President Trump. Uh, but but really, what the things that he says about President Trump really are general opposition to politics and to being involved too much in politics. He's a very apolitical person, my rabbi. But that doesn't mean anything to me as far as my affiliation with politics. I don't go to my rabbi to ask who to vote for. I figure that out on my own. I listen to the radio. I listen to both sides. I listen to conservative talk radio and I listen to NPR and uh, compare the two and I come to my own conclusions about who to vote for and how to vote and not because a rabbi says so. And the same thing, the truth is uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to be more likely now I think they fixed the video right I'm not going to be more likely to vote for President Trump because of because Rabbi Kamenetsky says it's a good idea if anything I, I've gained a little bit more respect for Rabbi Kamenetsky that he's not afraid to <laughs> to express his opinion I, in some sort of a forum, I don't know if it was exactly a public forum. I think it might have been a just a private conversation. That, but then someone went and recorded. I don't know the the whole story behind this, and yet the media uh, in the Jewish world made a big deal about it. And uh, Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky is more of a leading figure for the more American side of the Orthodox community. He's, I would say, equally respected in the yeshivish world as in the uh, modern Orthodox world. He's someone who has gone out of his way to give guidance and so forth for those who are in need, he's, you know, he, he's, uh, he lives in Philadelphia, not in Brooklyn, so he's, you know, in more of a, you know, out of town type of situation in a certain sense, the son of, you know, Rabbi Yankov Kamenetsky, the, the tremendous goddle, Rabbi Yankov. so, uh, is, uh, and, and he himself, he's, he, he's positioned himself as a real manhig, as a real leader, community leader, um, and, and done so and, and operated as such in a very positive way. And he's a very humble, kind, uh, soft-spoken person. Uh, and the and the you know and the real erlichid. Uh, but the truth is, uh, you know, his word doesn't really sway much, uh, let's say, in the Hasidic world. Um, 
but the truth is, you know, by our communities, not that we disrespect them anyway, I'm just saying it's not, it's nish for ninja, right? Uh, when it comes to those worlds, and I'm not saying that I represent that world, these Hasidic worlds, really that much either. Um, you know, if anything, I've somewhat, you know, attached myself to those worlds, but I'm more where I come from is really the the young Israel, the more modern Orthodox young Israel, uh, American style uh, Orthodoxy. You know, that's really where I come from. Uh, you, you know, I mean, a lot of people know me more as, oh, I'm a Valchuva whose uh, father was, was Catholic, but the, the truth is, I, 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 my Zayda was a, a, a Yidu Davin three times a day in the Young Israel Shul, and that's really where my Yiddishkeit came from. I wasn't in the car, if not by NCSY, not by Chabad, and not by Esha Torah. I learned in Or Sameach, but in the Derech program with a lot of people who grew up from most of the you know, children of Rabbonim, you know, most of the the guys in the program that I was at uh, grew up from. And <coughs> so this, you know, but I learned in the more uh, modern places, not the uh, Classically modern uh, YU, but you know, uh, you know, I went to a young Israel where the first rough they had there was a, a Chaim Berliner, and the second uh, it was a big tzaddik, and the second was a Chavetz Chaim guy, and, and so you know, Chaim Berlin, Chavetz Chaim, those are yeshivish, but uh, moderate yeshivish, you know, and then I I learned in Lander College, which you know is somewhere between the right wing of the modern orthodox world and the more liberal or moderate Haredi ultra-orthodox world which is the world of, of uh, to a certain extent Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky uh, the fact is uh, you know I I attached myself to one Rav who was a, 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 a Philly Talmud and uh, I was also very um, I really highly respected our dean uh, in our in our college, who is a rav of a shul in Brooklyn, also uh, and a more modern rav, who also is a talmud of, of Philly yeshiva. So uh, the, 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 there's some kasher that I have there, and you ha- and you have these two opposite people who went to yeshiva together much like people that I went to yeshiva with, that, you know, we were in the same class, and I maybe was more to the right in certain things, and friends of mine were more to the left in certain things, and so forth. And so to uh, these two Rabbonim, who I respect very highly, uh, and they both uh, went in a little bit different directions and came from the same place. And the truth is, in a Philly yeshiva, you have, you have Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky, who is uh, probably the... <laughs> the the uh, you know the flag of the moderate Haredi world the this the middle of the road Haredi uh, he, he remains ultra orthodox Haredi black hat authentically so not not just wearing a like how the Rabbanut they wear black hats or a certain, certain modern orthodox right? guys from YU wear black hats he's a real deal. Uh, and he uh, but he's moderate he's not an extremist in any sense and uh, but also in Philly you had Rebellia Shrei who was a little bit more to the right and and spoke out against Toro College for example uh, although in the end I asked Ardeen about uh, about that he said he said that when we opened this Turo College, and how it, we got a bracha from Rebbe Uh You know, th- he he did change his views a little bit later, uh, and I was you know I read certain things and didn't know 
all the background of it. And, and, you know, certain times in my life I was a much more extremist, and I'm trying to find myself to be more moderate and liberal, to be honest. And now that I've rambled on for 15 minutes, um, but I wanted to establish who I am for those who don't know who I am a little bit or where I'm coming from. I am, you know, college educated. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I have my smicha. I have some honorary postgraduate degrees and postgraduate certificates and so forth. Were not exactly honorary; they were earned, but based on my learning and things, and not exactly maybe recognized. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I, I can. You know, I, I could put letters M H L D D whatever T H D whatever else after my name if I want to. Um, I don't know if I'll necessarily get a job in a college with that, but I'm, I'm actually talking to a, to a, an accredited college about maybe giving a course that might be uh, uh, they might accept me as I am. So uh, I'm a little bit of an academic. Perhaps you know that uh, here I could be an adjunct professor in a in an accredited college. Um, it looks, yeah, you know, we were it, until the the whole reaction to this to this virus, or maybe overreaction to this virus, came about. It looked like I was going to have such a position. I didn't really want to talk about it. But in any event, this person who very proudly puts on his Twitter professor, just like I very proudly put rabbi, so I don't, I don't I'm not criticizing him for that uh, he said something, he's like you know, the, the Haredim, they must know, they must know this guy is saying that uh, our president I, uh, you know, I don't want to put his name together with the, with the appellations and, and slurs and, and slander that he's putting on him, but we all know what the left say, that he's a, a racist and an anti-Semite and God forbid all these things. It's, it's, although it's slanderous to say such a thing, and that was my response. And then they, they said, just because he's pro-Israel, um, you know, that's why they follow him. Now, I, it could be, as I said, that uh, Rabbi Kamenetsky, Shlita, he is maybe what we would call moderate, and generally moderate means you have more of a positive view of the state of Israel, even though to me, personally, in general, I see that as being a little bit more uh, extremist, but that's, I'm, not, I'm not getting into that. But with that being said, I do want to explain my positions with that as well. Now, where I came from, and my ideology has developed over the years, and is still continuing to develop. My Zayd, all of a shalom, like I said, who was a Yid, who daven three times a day in the Young Israel Shul, was a big devotee of Rabbi Meir Kahani. Hashem Yim Kum Domei. And he, my Zayda was a police officer, he was a parole officer, and he often, when Kahani would come to New York, my Zayda would, would be a shtickle bodyguard for Mayor Kahana. Um, and yet, so when Mayor Kahana was kicked out of the Knesset, so you know, in the young Israel schools, those who might know, they added a new prayer. Uh, you know, it was 70 years ago, I guess. Uh, a prayer for the, and, and a lot of other modern Orthodox shuls, a prayer for the state of Israel. And they make a big deal about this. And everyone stands up and everything. And usually me, I'll walk out a little bit if, uh, if they're saying this. Uh, my, and my Zayda, after they kicked out Mayor Kahane from the Knesset, from the Israeli parliament, uh, he, he didn't stand up anymore for the prayer for the for the state of Israel. Um, so uh, 
that that's my Masura. <laughs> that's my tradition to to not give respect to this prayer. My Zayda at Gehalten is in a different way, obviously. And when I was younger, I was very enamored by Mayor Kahana, but I was always uncomfortable with with his flag waving, with with saying Hallel on Heir, things like that. Um, but beyond that, Heir being the the, uh, the the day the Israelis celebrate their Independence Day. Uh, so a lot of his things that he said made a certain amount of sense to me, but I was always uncomfortable with his Zionism, and I never really wanted to call myself a Zionist, I'll be honest. Um, i got to get ready for work. i got to find my badge and everything. There it is. So anyway, um, and I remember my first year in Eretzel, I would hang out a little bit by... Uh, you know, not too far from where Sameach, uh, I don't know, half a mile away, was Meir Kahana's yeshiva. I think the yeshiva should still be there. Um, and I would hang out there every now and then, listen to a shir, uh, watch a video or something there. Uh, a small little yeshiva that he had there. Uh, he was Rosh Hashiva. And then... Um... My second year in Eretzel, I got uh, a little bit more enamored with the more anti-Zionist. I had one friend of mine uh, who influenced me very much, and I really uh, became much more of an anti-Zionist. Um, I spent a lot of time in Toldos Aaron, Toldos Avram Yitzchok, and so forth, and I felt very much identifying with with that with that world. Um, and when I came back to America, also very much attached to Satmer and so forth. But then again, uh, it's not because the Rebbe Gezuk to Zoy, the Rebbe Geis in the Zoy, that I came to these conclusions, but really through logical understandings and so forth of I came to the conclusion that it's not in the best interest of the Klal Yisrael and not in the best interest on the individual level to be uh, to, to be connected to the state of Israel, uh, particularly not as an American Jew. Um, and even if one lives in Israel, I probably would tr- try to avoid a strong connection there. And yet, so why is it that here I am, uh, and I am unabashedly very pro-Trump, I put uh, stickers on my car, Trump, Pence, even one in Yiddish, Trump 2020, uh, Jews for Trump, even I put a sticker on my car, and uh, I got I got the hat that's the Space Force, another one, Trump 2020, I got another one, Keep America Great, I got a, a t-shirt, uh, with long sleeve T-shirt, I got uh, came in the mail recently. Uh, Trump pants, and, I, uh, and and I'll be honest, when I when when President Trump was running, he was my last uh, choice uh, in the primaries. I really wanted uh, I really wanted Ted Cruz, and I really want and I would have voted for uh, Doctor. Uh, uh, what's his name? Who, who's now the HUD? Uh, he's the Seventh Day Adventist. I'm trying to remember his name. Doctor. Uh, uh, I'll remember the name later. He's the neurosurgeon. You know the doctor. Um, so I want. I would have voted for him. I can't remember his name now. And uh, but I really liked Ted Cruz. And really, my last choice would have been Donald Trump, because I felt he's too liberal. I, I agreed very strongly with what uh, with, with what uh, Ted Cruz had said at the New York Valley as a New Yorker, uh, but uh, I was very much a Ted Cruz man, and the only reason why I voted for Donald Trump is because I knew that Hillary Clinton is the epitome of evil, 
And if, if Bernie Sanders would have been the Democratic nominee, I probably would have been comfortable voting third party. It doesn't really matter. I live in New York. My vote really doesn't matter that much. Uh, although, who knows? We, we, we kind of thought maybe Trump could win New York. And we're thinking that maybe now. Maybe Trump could win New York. Their vice. I think maybe that's why people are so nervous. So, <clears throat> so why is it that I, who am, I, I, I am unabashedly not a Zionist, and maybe an anti-Zionist or stickle, and I always say I don't have the dual loyalties. First thing, I just want to answer these things to say that he's a racist. He always says I'm the least racist person, and it's true. And he's done more to help the African-American community than any president since Lincoln, really. And then and now, uh, and the truth is, and Joe Biden is a segregationist. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. You know, the one thing our community was very uncomfortable with President Trump was was uh, he was he he was not against marriage between two men, uh, the redefinition of marriage. He didn't he didn't really have an opinion on it, and he, I would say he's probably entering into the presidency the most pro-gay president we ever had. And, uh, and and for our more traditional, biblically-minded community, it's a little bit uncomfortable. And yet, uh, we support him because we are here for what's good for America. And then to say he's anti-Semite, first of all, I don't like that term anti-Semite. I prefer Judeophobia because Judaism is a religion and not a race. And the truth is, and, and his own daughter is, is Jewish. He didn't disown her. If he was a quote-unquote anti-Semite, if he hated Jews, wouldn't he have disowned his daughter for, for becoming Jewish, and instead, not only he didn't disown her, she is his number one advisor. She and, and her and her husband, his item. So t it's it's malicious and slanderous to call this man racist or uh, or, or or anti-Semitic. And I don't. And it's not just because he's pro-Israel, quote unquote. I don't know what that means. And 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 then you know. Clinton also called himself pro-Israel, just he was pro the left of Israel, and, and, and Trump is pro the right of Israel. I don't think Trump, and, and, and if the left would win in Israel, Trump would also probably support them. That's because of what's good for America. It's time for me to go to work, and I don't have time to talk right now. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. We'll see you later.